chilaquiles is one of my favorite Mexican dishes to make for any time of the day when I'm hungry. So I'm going to get started with a green salsa. Here I have a half pound of tomatillos, a half onion, a couple cloves of garlic, and two jalapeños. You can most definitely use serrano peppers, which have a spicier bite to them, but I'm gonna stick with jalapeños. I'm going to bring these ingredients up to a boil and let them cook for 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare my tortillas. Today, I'm going to be making an individual serving of chilaquiles for myself. So here I have four corn tortillas and I'm just going to cut them into small chip sizes. Now, when making chilaquiles, I've actually been in desperate times where I had no corn tortillas, but I had chips. So I just use like the corn tortilla chips that you buy at the store. But I'm going to show you what I normally do. And I take corn tortillas, I'm going to put around a quarter cup of oil in the pan, and I'm just going to toast them, much like I would do migas. Now, when people make chilaquiles, they sometimes deep fry them because you want to get the corn tortilla basically like a crunchy chip. But I'm just doing this for myself, so most days I just toss it in a pan with a little bit of oil, and I do everything in one pan pretty much. Now, if you are serving more people chilaquiles, you definitely want to double the size of your salsa and probably quadruple the size of the corn tortillas. And just bear in mind, this is one of many ways to make chilaquiles. I don't have the most authentic way to make them, but they are tasty and it won't stop me from trying. So back to the salsa. So here I have all of my ingredients, they are boiled. Now I'm going to blend them. I've drained most of the water with the exception of around maybe a half cup to a cup of the, the water that was in the pot. So now I'm just going to add everything to the blender and I do encourage you to season to taste. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. I'm also going to add a half teaspoon of chicken bouillon base. You could also add your chicken bouillon powder if you have it. I'm also going to be adding a whole bunch of fresh cilantro. Again, make the salsa your own, use what you have, don't let it stop you from making this wonderful dish. So here we go. So basically my salsa is done. Now I wanted to show you some of the things that I will be topping the chilaquiles with. Today I'm going to be using some cotija cheese and I bought this at my local market. I was super excited that they had it. And I'm also going to be using Oaxaca cheese. This is basically a really good melting cheese. So this is what I'll be using today, but I also wanted to mention that if you cannot find these types of cheeses, you could also use Monterey Jack cheese. This cheese might be a little bit more accessible to most people. So now I am ready to start making these chilaquiles. I'm gonna go back and check on my toasting tortilla chips and they are ready. This is exactly where I like them. And again, you could deep fry these and make really crunchy toasty chips, but this is good for me. I like to do things in one pan if I can help it. So at this point, all I'm going to do is pour in some salsa. Okay, so at this point, if you have some epazote, add it. And I could not find any this time around, but it's not going to stop me from making this. But I wanted to show you what it looks like. Here is some fresh epazote. It tastes very medicinal and it has a bite to it. I have to say it's kind of bitter, but it does go well with chilaquiles. 
And you might also be able to find dried epazote in your local grocery store. But again, I couldn't find any. And the two recipes that I normally have seen epazote used in my family would be my grandfather's beans and his chilaquiles. So if you can get your hands on some, it tastes really good in some chilaquiles. And you would probably want to add it at this point. So now I'm just going to go in with my Oaxaca cheese and add that to the top of this to give it a head start to melt. And as always, all the ingredients will be listed in the description box below. And now all that's left to do is plate them, and I'm going to have these for breakfast. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching. Hey guys, you can click on the video icons for more recipes, or you can click on my picture icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching.